I cannot be here to leave you, Aqua. Prince Gogo said, his voice trembling with emotion. My heart will wither like the leaves in the Hamatan wind. Aqua's eyes, like the darkest pools of the river, filled with tears. I too feel the pain for our parting, Gogo. But our love is forbidden. Our tribes have been at war for generations. But our love is stronger than any war. Prince Gogo protested, his hands grasping Aqua's hands. Love is not enough, Aqua said, her voice barely above a whisper. And promise to another, if we stay together, it will only bring shame and destruction to our families. Prince Gogo's face contorted in anguish. Then let us run away, my love. Let us follow the river to its end and start anew. Aqua's smile was sorrowful. We cannot escape our destinies, Gogo. I must fulfill my duty. As the river flowed beneath them, Aqua and Prince Gogo shared a passionate, desperate embrace together. They knew it was their last moment together. And then Prince Gogo watched Aqua being carried away in the boat into the distance as he washed on. Aqua had been found by the riverside one afternoon in the Obosi kingdom, unconscious, and had been taken down to the palace where she was nurtured and taken care of before she slowly and gradually started re uh, regaining consciousness. And by that time, she had fallen head over heels in love with the prince, Prince Gogo, who was also completely taken over by the beautiful young, helpless maiden, Aqua. That looked like a princess, but gradually, as Aqua regained consciousness, it, was, it became known that everything was different. Few months after she regained consciousness, a message came to the king, Prince Gogo's father, that the young lady with them was the daughter of his arch enemy, the king of Achara kingdom, and she must be returned immediately. He had saved the daughter of his arch enemy. Imagine what life is someone that is your enemy. You were the one that rescued the child. Imagine that. That is why enmity is bad. The Ach Kingdom, the Achara Kingdom and the Obosi Kingdom had been enemies for generations. And so when the message arrived, there was nothing they could do but to obey. Otherwise, there would be war. Moreover, it was stated that Aqua was already betrothed to someone else and they were about to get married. That threw Prince Gogo into a deep feeling of hurt and complete helplessness, especially after pleading with Aqua so much and she refused. Despite the deep love between them, Aqua had put duty to her family and kingdom first. It was so painful that Prince Gogo refused to marry in his life and spent days and nights in heartbroken feeling. He sat heavy with sorrow. As the years passed, Prince Gogo heard rumors of Aqua's marriage and that she had gotten a child. The pain of her betrayal caught deep within him. But one day, after many years, Prince Gogo received a surprising message from Aqua pleading for forgiveness and asking him to meet her by the riverside. He went, but with his heart guarded. There to Prince Gogo's surprise and in truth stood Aqua by the riverside, her eyes etched with lines of sorrow. Gogo, my love, she cried. I was wrong to leave you. I obeyed my family, but now I realize that our love was the true destiny. Prince Gogo's anger and heart boiled over. You, you left me for another. How can I forgive you? Aqua fell to her knees. I know I betrayed you, Gogo, but my love for you never wavered. Forgive me and let's part in peace. Let's part in peace. This touched Gogo's heart. Once hardened, now it softened, and he saw the sincerity in Aqua's eyes and knew that their love remained despite the pain and betrayal she had come to beg for forgiveness. 
I forgive you. Aqua, Prince Gugu said, his voice barely above a whisper. May our love remain in our hearts, even as we part. And so they parted, their love remaining, a bittersweet reminder of what could never be. The river flowed on, a witness to the enduring love and the pain of letting go. That was when Prince Gogo decided to marry. Many years later, Aqua lost her parents and her elder brother whom she loved so much, became the king of Achara kingdom. Ah, Aqua's husband also died, leaving her with two children. When Prince Gogo, now the king of Obosi kingdom, heard of it, he sent a message of reconciliation to the new king of Achara kingdom. Aqua's brother, who had known how Prince Gogo helped to save his sister and he knew that he loved the sister so much. Immediately knew he was interested in his sister because she had told him everything and he, he knew that the new king of Obosi kingdom wanted to have something with his sister. So he agreed. The two kingdoms reconciled. After the reconciliation, King Dodo, uh, Gogo asked for the hand of Aqua in marriage. Thus, the two lovebirds, now advanced in age, came back together when Aqua was 48 and King Gogo was 55 years of age. They remained together. Every other wife became insignificant. Aqua was the reigning queen, the love of his life. They remained together, their love shining as their faces lit up with joy and they embraced King Gogo holding Aqua close as memories of their love and deep feelings that their suppression could not break ignited their passion like wildfire and nothing else mattered. And so their love story became a legend told and retold around campfires, a testament to the power of forgiveness and the enduring bond between two souls. That's the end of the story. Please like, subscribe, and share the videos to get more views. Love you all, and thanks for watching.